My name is Raymond Foster. I'm a past master of the San Dimas Masonic Lodge and the current president of the Rotary Club of San Dimas. And I will be your master of ceremonies for this evening. You can't hear me back there. Now you can hear me back there. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, the gavel is an instrument used by both Masons and Rotarians uh, to officiate at meetings. Uh, this gavel will be used tonight. Three wraps of the gavel will ask you to rise or stand, and one wrap will seat you. The gavel can also be used to call upon groups of individuals. As an example, these three, gra th these three wraps are for Masons only. That works very well. Thank you. Now you should applaud, they did a good job there. They stood up, nobody fell. Our lodge is a two-story structure. Listen closely this evening and you will hear how another two-story structure was crucial to the formation of the United States Marine Corps. In this building, the actual Masonic Lodge room is located on the second floor. Immediately following tonight's event, we will be, we'll conduct a tour of the lodge upstairs and this 15 minute experience will reveal to you some of the secrets, the mysterious secrets of Freemasonry. As we all know, the United States Marine Corps was founded on November 10th, 1775. And the Marine Corps birthday is one of the most important events in the life of every man and woman who is serving or has served in that most distinguished branch of the United States Armed Forces. Tomorrow, however, is also Veterans Day. Therefore, tonight we will honor all those who have served in the United States Armed Forces, but especially the United States Marine Corps. Before we begin this most special occasion, it is our duty before entering upon any great or important undertaking to first invoke the aid and blessing of God. Let us therefore reverently unite with our chaplain, Brother Larry Graham uh, of the San Dimas Masonic Lodge to deliver the invocation. Please rise and remain standing for the invocation and presentation of the colors. This evening we have with us a number of distinguished dignitaries. As I read their names, would you please hold your applause until all have been introduced? And as I call your name, please stand and remain standing until all have been introduced. Emmett Badar from the city of San Dimas, our mayor. Andrew Chow, mayor pro tem, city, uh, city of Diamond Bar. Nancy Lyons, city council member, city of Diamond Bar. Stan Liu, city council member, city of Diamond Bar. Steve Tai, city council member, City of Diamond Bar. Derek Bamanu, Bonita Unified School District, Board of Education. Greg Pilato, Bonita Unified School District, Board of Education. Patty Tai, Trustee Elect, Pomona Unified School District. Teresa Lee, Walnut Valley Water District, Board of Directors. Chris Constantine, City Manager, City of San Dimas. Captain Ernie Billy, Commanding Officer, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Sci Scientific Services Bureau. Captain, uh, Captain, Captain, Captain Walid Ashrafani, Ashrafani, Commanding Officer, Los Angeles County Sheriff's San Dimas Station. Dominic Torres, Chair, Rotary Club of Military Family Support. Claudia Maidenberg, President, Diamond Bar Women's Club. Bonnie Duenas, President, Roland Heights Women's Club. Cuca Rodriguez, President, Baldwin Park Women's Club. Suzanne Farmer, President, Oakview Women's Club. Camille Jones, President of the Diamond Bar Community Foundation. Maura Fisher, President, Blue Star Mothers. Therina Lin, Diamond Bar Chinese American Association, Past Board President. Patsy Wilson, Resolutions Chair, San Gabriel Valley District of Women's Club and State Chair Committee. Patrick Byrne, Executive Director, Armed Services YMCA, 29 Palms, Marine Corps Base. Robert Artiman, Master, San Dimas Masonic Lodge, number 408. Rick Wood, Past Master, San Dimas Masonic Lodge, number 428. Stephen Miller, Past Master and Grand Organist, Grand Lodge of California. And then Worshipful Alfonso Sanchez, Past Master, Glendora Masonic Lodge, number 404, Inspector of the 723rd Masonic District. Please welcome them and thank them for their service.
Please be seated. Assisting enlisted Marine Corps personnel during the holiday season is a passion within the Diamond Bar Women's Club. Their project, Making Spirits Bright, has the goal of providing joy to over 100 Marine Corps families at both Camp Pendleton and 29 Palms Marine Corps Base. Tonight is one of several fundraising events they host to attain this goal. Within the Diamond Bar Women's Club, a select group of women have dedicated themselves to this task and they are members of the Military Outreach Committee. They work tirelessly on making spirits bright. It is my pleasure to introduce these heroes. As your name is called, please stand and remain standing. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Sally Fidel. Rachel Kirk. Wendy Knowles. Teresa Lee, Nancy Lyons, Fred Malky, Kathleen New, Sonia Reed, Mimi Sapoko. Please thank them for their service and leadership. <laughs> there is another group of important civic leaders present. They are members of our various clubs and organizations that provide untold hours of service to our community and our nation and world. As these groups are introduced, if you're a member, please stand and remain standing and we'll hold our applause until all have been introduced. Would all members of a woman's club please stand? Would all Rotarians please stand? Would all Masons please stand? Would all members of any other civic and or community group please stand? Thank you for your leadership and service to our community. In addition to being the birthday of the Marine Corps, tomorrow is Veterans Day. If you're a veteran and I call your branch of service, please stand and remain standing. Again, please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Would all veterans of the United States Army please stand? Would all veterans of the United States Navy please stand? Would all veterans of the United States Air Force please stand? Would all veterans of the United States Coast Guard please stand? Coast Guard. Coast Guard. All right, two years in a row, I'm going to take the hit for us. <laughs> Would all active duty personnel and veterans of the United States Marine Corps please stand? Please thank them for their service and dedication. Tonight's program was a community effort. Multiple organizations were involved in coming together to serve a common goal. And this program would not be possible without the assistance of the following individuals who served on the committee beginning in March. As I read the names, please hold your applause until all have been introduced. And as I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Sonia Reed, Military Outreach Program, Diamond Bar Women's Club. There she is. Patrick Byrne, Executive Director, Armed Services YMCA, 29 Palms. Wayne Schmidt, Master Elect, San Dimas Masonic Lodge. Glenn Johnson, who's pulling salads out as we speak, so <laughs> don't stop what you're doing, Glenn, keep going. And of course, myself, Raymond Foster, past master of the San Dimas Masonic Lodge, president of the Rotary Club. Please thank them for their service. Hi, I'm Sonia Reed, Military Chairwoman with the Diamond Bar Women's Club and the program Making Spirits Pride. This program is providing yearly Christmas presents to enlisted family members at Camp Pendleton and the 29 Palms Marine Base. Wish lists are provided by each base and our volunteers purchase and wrap the gifts. Upon finished wrapping, 
gifts are being placed in large bag, transported to each base for Christmas. As we get closer to the holidays, the committee and each base are getting together with Marines handing out the Christmas presents to the families. If you would like to donate to this program, please make your donations payable to the Dime Bar Women's Club in the memo military and mail your donations to the Diamond Bar Women's Club, P.O. Box 4035 Diamond Bar, California 91765. Thank you and God bless our troops. If you're a warrior and you're leading warriors and you're about to step in the battle, one of the key things you must have is an absolute confidence because that radiates out of you. You're giving to them the warrior spirit. Semper Fidelis means that if you are a foe before me, I will not quit until you fall. Keep other people awake at night. The Marine just plain considers himself a better soldier than anybody else. Marines have never given anyone any reason to think differently. We are unique. Not just among our fellow citizens, but among all those who defend our nation. We are defined by our warfighting ethos, our intangible warrior spirit that moves us forward into any battle, in any domain, and binds us not only to the Marine on our left and right, but to all Marines who came before us. Current events around the world show us that peace is far from guaranteed. America's adversaries continue to present an ever-evolving threat to our nation's prosperity and security. Today, almost 31,000 Marines are forward deployed or stationed abroad. In every theater, in every time and place, standing ready to confront those who would do our nation harm. The American strength is based upon the fabric of all of the different cultures and people that come to and that applies on the battlefield, and I've seen that there. That is an essence of the power of the American fighting spirit. For 247 years, capable and determined adversaries have tested the Marine Corps. The enemy knows when they see that EGA and they see a real Marine hooked to that EGA, that could be a serious situation. On each occasion, our forebears gave them reason to fear and respect the title United States Marine. Our adversaries have always had a choice, abandon their aggressions or stand and fight. Some chose to fight and were destroyed. Today, our adversaries still have a choice and they know if they choose to fight, they will be defeated. From the wheat fields of Bella Wood, to the volcanic sands of Iwo Jima, to the crowded streets of Way City or Ramadi. Marines 
prove time and time again they will claim victory on any battlefield. Our mission was to stay on the compound. Well, things happen. Situations change. And we got a call that the gunny from the Marine Security Guard Force, the uh, RSO, and their driver were involved in a vehicle accident. We were driven out to the crash site. Liberian rebels armed to the teeth with anything that they had. We had to uh, do a makeshift backboard and stabilized them and got all of our personnel. You're trained for it, but you know, there's variables in there that you could never prepare for. And so you just go with it. And while battlefields and technologies change, the qualities of a Marine are timeless. Grit, strength, boldness, discipline, initiative, adaptability, honor, courage, and commitment. It would be impossible for me to say with any amount of confidence that I would be where and who I am today if I didn't have the foundation of being a Marine. The Marine Corps and how it shapes us and the history of courage and sacrifice that we fill the shoes of and that we follow, um, it's almost impossible to not continue on and to not want to become the best version of yourself personally, but professionally as a Marine as well. These qualities were birthed by the legacy of the old breed. Those like Herschel Woody Williams. He really just was a huge inspiration growing up. I loved warrior figures and he was the main one. It's the legacy of the Marines who came before us and of our Marines today. When the nation calls, we answer. As America's premier crisis response force, Marines thrive in chaotic situations where friction is highest. We have to always understand that there's always been troops on the deck taking the fight to the enemy on their distant lands. We are proud to be first to fight, and we are ready today and tomorrow. Standing ready with undying devotion to the court, to the mission, and to each other. Our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. In 2001, when our nation was still reeling from the September 11th terrorist attacks, Marines aboard the USS Peleliu and the USS Bataan came from the sea and launched the longest amphibious raid in history. We came 370 miles from the sea, 25 aircraft. During one period of darkness, we inserted 400 Marines over that distance. We did what we say that we do. We did it in an expeditionary manner. We did it from the ships. And despite uh, a lot of risk, we did it successfully. The same war fighting spirit that secures our victory in combat comes from our ability to innovate, to iterate, to adapt and we find inspiration in each other. I remember my first cat shot in an F-18 into a combat zone. And that was a whirlwind of emotions, right? You're ready to go, you've practiced, you're trained, but you're a little bit nervous. That nervousness though I think is good, right? It keeps you sharp. She's more than an astronaut. She is a Marine whose warfighter ethos shapes who she is. A battle-tested warrior with 47 combat missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. When I'm sitting on top of that rocket and they start to load the prop and it starts to shake and rumble, I hope that I feel a little bit nervous, keeps me sharp. I hope though that I have this calmness, knowing that I'm trained, my crew is trained, we are ready to go. And I hope that the second that we launch from planet Earth, that all just disappears and we're in the moment. While those who threaten our nation remain, America sleeps well at night knowing the future will be no different. Because the Marines are always standing ready. Across the force, we continue to innovate and experiment 
in preparation for the future fight. Where we will fight might be uncertain, but we prepare for uncertainty. When called, we will fight and we will win. Today, tomorrow, and in the future. These victories are not won because of our technology or our equipment, but because of all of you. Because of everything you do, every day, to remain the best trained, most professional, most ready force in the world. That has not changed. We are warfighters first and always. If the call comes today to go into combat, we will win. But that's no excuse not to be better tomorrow. It is the individual Marines who make up the team. They are the decisive advantage. Whether in combat or in competition, training our future Marines in recruit training, or preparing to deploy on one of our Marine Expeditionary Units, we have always adapted to the changing character of war. Why we fight and why we win is unchanged. It is our ethos, our character, and our unapologetic resolve to be the most capable and most lethal fighting force in the world. Marines, you are writing the next chapter of our Corps. Our legacy rests upon your shoulders, and I'm confident you will meet the task. Simba Fidelis. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Marines. The Master of the Lodge is the man elected to lead the Lodge for one year. Last Monday, Brother Schmidt was elected for, as our Master for 2023. He will be installed here at San Dimas Masonic Lodge on December 17th. And I understand our explorers will be presenting the colors at that event also. Uh, Wayne Schmidt was born in a small town in upstate New York as a young man living in upstate New York, not far from the Hudson River and a location of the Revolutionary War Battle of Stony Point. He vividly recalls an event connecting his home to the Revolutionary War. While digging holes with his father, father to plant trees on their property, hundreds of cannonballs were unearthed, identified as bar shot and chain shot, which were designed to topple the masts of ships and tear their canvas sails. Local Revolutionary War archaeologists speculated at the time his home sat on top of a Revolutionary War ammunition dump. The ammunition was for cannons arranged not far from his home, guarding the section of the Hudson River. The cannons were situated to prevent the British ships from sailing up the river to attack West Point. Wayne Schmidt earned a degree in police science from John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York. After 31 years in law enforcement, he retired as the interim assistant special agent in charge of the Southern California Drug Task Force, Drug Enforcement Administration, Los Angeles. In 1974, he was raised a master mason in Bunting Charity Lodge, New York. Since 2015, he has held positions of marshal, junior deacon, senior deacon, junior warden, senior warden in our San Dimas Lodge. At present, he is one of seven commissioners of the Police Oversight Commission, City of Pomona. Please welcome Master-Elect Wayne Schmidt. President Ronald Reagan once commented, some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference in the world. The Marines don't have that problem. <laughs> Good evening. It is an honor to share with you tonight the birthday of the Marine Corps. From its founding 247 years ago today, Marines have served our nation with devotion, honor, and sadly sacrifice in Afghanistan over a year ago. Most of us have heard the phrase from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli in the Marine Corps hymn. Tonight I would like to share with you the beginning of the Marine Corps history and the military actions that forever immortalize those names. Join me at a crossroads in American history at the tavern where congressmen, colonists, and Freemasons met when a revolution began that changed the world. In 1775, Tun Tavern was an obscure eating and drinking establishment located at the Philadelphia Wharf and home to two Freemason Masonic lodges. Events took place at Tun Tavern that changed 13 individual colonies into a united country, thrusting it onto the world stage by defeating the world's superpower. Taverns in colonial America in 1775 looked very similar to the building you're sitting in here tonight. 
Ground floor rooms were used for cooking, eating, drinking, and where private meetings were held. Rooms above taverns like Tun housed Freemason Masonic lodges. Taverns were social centers where colonists shared and discussed the news of the day. And in 1775, the news was ominous as colonists were turning hostile against tyrannical British rule. General George Washington, a Freemason, held military and political strategy meetings in the tavern, planning the course of the war and later providing a direction for our new nation. In 1775, of the 56 members of the Second Continental Congress, 20 were known to be Freemasons. Nine of them would go on to sign the Declaration of Independence. As hostilities intensified with Great Britain, select members of Congress met at Tun Tavern to form the Naval Committee. In May 1775, two months after the skirmish at Lexington and Concord between British soldiers and Continental militia, the possibility of war was becoming a reality. The Naval Committee, consisting of seven congressmen, four of whom were Freemasons, met at Tun Tavern to identify the ways and means for furnishing the colonies with armament for protection against British naval aggression that was sure to come. In October 1775, Congress authorized the Naval Committee to purchase four heavily armed ships to form what would become the core of the Continental Navy. Colonists who were fishermen and able-bodied sailors, many with British naval experience, enlisted in the Navy. The Naval Committee continued meeting at Tun Tavern, developing ideas on how to fight against superior British military forces. The concept of the Continental Marines was born from these meetings. <clears throat> By act of Congress on November 10, 1775, with the support of the Naval Committee, the Continental Marines came into existence. Colonists who were militia, hunters, and former British soldiers who as young men were battle-tested, having fought in the closing years of the French and Indian Wars, enlisted in the Marines. Historians have estimated at the height of staffing, there were 131 Marine officers, over 2,000 enlisted, some of whom were of African descent. Samuel Nicholas, a Freemason from Tun Tavern Masonic Lodge, enlisted in the Marines and was commissioned as a captain. Later in 1798, Nicholas would become the first Marine to hold the title Commandant of the Marine Corps. Nicholas would not be the last Freemason to hold that title. The Naval Committee had developed guidelines for the Marines' conduct and designed the Marines' uniforms. One specification was that the uniform had a high, stiff leather collar to defend against enemy sword slashes and to keep the man's head erect perhaps the genesis for the term leatherneck. During naval operations, the primary mission of the Marines when aboard a ship was to protect the ship's captain and officers. During naval battles, Marines targeted British officers, helmsmen, and those commanding British gun crews. The Marines' marksmanship was so effective, it disrupted British leadership during battle, creating confusion among British gun and enlisted crews. The Naval Committee, <clears throat> Naval Committee member Christopher Gadsden designed a motto banner for the Continental Marines. The banner set on a highly visible solid yellow background had at its center the caricature of a coiled timber rattlesnake ready to strike. Its 13 rattles were representative of the 13 colonies. Four words emblazoned on it, don't tread on me, was a direct warning to the British a warning the British would mourn not following throughout the war. Gaston's choice of a timber rattlesnake on a Continental Marine banner may have been prophetic. When angered, timber rattlesnakes were known to strike from land or water, often without warning. Colonists of the time described its attack as lethal with a determined ferocity. In March 1776, just five months after their inception, the Continental Marines took the war to British soil. By conducting two amphibious attacks against the world's most powerful navy, 
The Continental Navy transported undetected by British warships, Captain Nicholas, fellow officers, and 255 enlisted Marines more than 900 miles from Delaware to attack the Royal British Naval Base at Nassau in the Bahamas. Nassau was a fortified naval supply and coordination center for British warships and armed British merchant ships transporting soldiers, weapons, and military supplies to the colonies. During the first attack, Marines captured two British forts, the main government house, seized British naval charts, codes, and war supplies. During the second attack, the Marines seized large amounts of much needed gunpowder, 88 large field guns, and four heavily armed British merchant ships. It was said that the Marines generously gifted the seized ships intact to the Continental Navy. The Marines would continue unrelenting warfare against the British during the war, attacking from both land and sea. Marines sailed the Hudson, Ohio, and Mississippi rivers, attacking and destroying British bases and outposts. Marines attacked supply and troop convoys at sea and on land, denying resupply to British troops while disrupting British lines of communication. Marines attacked British loyalists on the shores of Lake Pontchartrain, which is now Louisiana, seizing or destroying armed and unarmed, unarmed British ships, war supplies, and equipment brought through the Gulf of Mexico. Marines reinforced General Washington's army on the battlefields of Trenton in Princeton, New Jersey, engaging and defeating highly trained and well-armed British and Hessian mercenary forces. By 1780, the Marines' seizure and attacks on British merchant shipping financially devastated Britain's merchants. Insurance rates in London for merchant shipping and insurance premiums were raised to crippling financial highs. Merchants delayed or refused to resupply British trips, uh, ships using, <coughs> sorry, delayed or refused to resupply British troops using their ships. By 1785, with the war ended, the Continental Marines and Navy were disbanded. In 1798, the Marines and Navy were reestablished as the United States Marine Corps and Navy. In 1801, the United States Navy and Marine Corps were called upon to protect American citizens and commerce from a more distant threat. The Barbary states of Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli engaged in maritime piracy attacking and seizing American shipping and kidnapping Americans who were kid traveling through the waters off North Africa. They demanded ransom in exchange for the, lease, for the release of American ships and American citizens while requiring, while requiring continuing payment from America to ensure free maritime commerce. When the, president, when the American president refused, the Pasha of Tripoli declared war on America. Under the command of Stephen Decatur, a Freemason, the American Navy blockaded Barbary coastal ports while transporting Marines to free American hostages. Using Continental Marine tactics, the Marines attacked the city of Tripoli, freed American hostages, and destroyed a captured American ship, rendering it worthless to the pirates. The Marines attacked and destroyed the Barbary pirates' fortress at Derma, Tripoli, halting the Barbary pirates' kidnapping of Americans and seizing of American shipping. The attack on Derma Tripoli was so effective and so decisive that Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson of the British Navy called it the most daring act of the age. In 1847, the Marine Corps was again called upon to protect the interests of America. During the Mexican-American War, the American Navy blockaded Mexican ports. Winfield Scott, another Freemason, commanded joint Army and Marine Corps forces. These forces would march into the interior of Mexico and attack the heavily fortified military citadel of Chapultepec. The citadel, located on a heavily defended rocky bluff, was surrounded by 12-foot high walls. The Marines called the citadel the Halls of Montezuma. On scaling the high walls, the Marines Marines engaged in combat so intense and protracted that it evolved into brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. During the battle, 90% of the Marine officers and non-commissioned officers were killed. Despite these heavy losses, the Marines captured the Citadel, Mexico City eventually fell, and the war ended. 
The red stripe or blood stripe on the pant leg of the Marine Corps dress uniform is a remembrance of the Marines' lives lost at the Battle of Chapultepec. Transformed over the century into today's United States Marine Corps and Navy, their, <clears throat> their mission to protect our nation has never wavered, and they have never faltered. Tonight, as we celebrate the 247th birthday of the Marine Corps, I ask all Masons to join me in a toast, if the brethren will fill their glasses. The next three wraps of the gavel are for Masons only. To the Masonic brethren who had the vision and courage to support the founding of the Continental Marines and Navy, to the, Continental, to the Continental Marines who fought to free our nation, to the United States Marine Corps who have continued to keep our nation free, may the great architect of the universe protect you and keep our nation safe. God bless you and thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Brother Schmidt. Stay on the stage there. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Brother Pilato and Captain Ernie Billy, would you please join me, Brother Schmidt and I, on stage, please? Oh, he's got that look. I don't know what's going on, but it can't be good. <laughs> It is a tradition among both Rotarians and Freemasons that we make pre presentations of gifts at our assemblies. San Dimas Masonic Lodge's Senior Ward Elect Greg Plato is a member of the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support, as well as an elected member of the Benita Unified School District. Brother Pilato, as Senior Warden Elect of the San Dimas Masonic Lodge and a member of the Satellite Rotary Club of Military, military Family Support, do you have a presentation? I do. Thank you, Brother Master of Ceremonies. Uh, Captain Ernie Billy is a United States Army veteran and has been a Los Angeles County Sheriff since 1999. Among Captain Billy's many community activities is his post as, as his position as post adjutant for the American Legion Los Angeles Sheriff Star Post 309. Captain Billy was instrumental in the success of the food drive in February 2022 which raised over five tons of food for the Pelican Pantry, serving Marine Corps families at the 29 Palms Marine Corps base. The tradition of challenge coins can be traced to World War II, when American forces deployed to the far reaches of the globe, securing the nation's freedom. Soldiers back to World War I and the Civil War left for battle with a coin from home in their pockets and kept it after the conflict as a lasting remembrance of their wartime experiences. American soldiers stationed in Germany after the war adopted that country's popular Fenning check. The Fenning was the smallest unit of German currency. When someone announced the Fenning check, does anyone know what happens? Or a challenge coin check? There we go. A soldier who cannot produce, they'll get their coin, slam it on the table, and anyone who, else who doesn't have a coin, they buy the first round of drinks. <laughs> the popularity of challenge coins spread during the Vietnam War, inspired by special forces that minted coins to express their unique identity and strong bond forged between them. Other units wanted their own coin to build camaraderie and symbolize their pride of membership in an elite group. As a token of our appreciation of your military service, law, enfor law enforcement service, and community service, it is my pleasure to present to you this Masonic Veterans Challenge coin. The front side acknowledges your status as one of America's veterans and displays the emblem of branches of the United, United States military. The other side of the coin displays the Masonic square and compass. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Brother Pilato, and thank you, Captain. We, we sincerely appreciate your service to our community. Would Dominic Torres, U.S. Marine veteran and chair of the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support, join me on stage with Sergeant Grace Grimaldi. All right, come on up. Come on over there, Sergeant. Uh, all right, 
On behalf of the Catherine Barger and the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, 5th District, it is my pleasure to present to you with a certificate commemorating the 247th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. It is our hope that you will share our sentiments with your fellow Marines at 29 Palms. reverse side of your program, you will find the words to the Marine Corps hymn. You may, you may need those words presently as we are going to sing the first verse of the Marine Corps hymn. These three gavels are for all of the Marines present only. Brother Larry Graham. Brother Larry Graham, please muster the Marines present into a single rank in front of the stage facing the audience. This, uh, these three raps are for everybody. Please rise. Please join me in singing the first verse of the Marine Corps hymn. From, From the halls of Montezuma. tempted to make you do that again, but I don't want everyone to hate me. So all of the Marines present here and assembled except Brother Larry Graham, Corporal Jesse James, and Lance Corporal Jessica Pineta are dismissed. Oh, Jesse James, hang on to him. Jesse, we need you to stay up here. Go down there and give me a hand. This is a delicate operation. They're going to bring this cake up here. All right. All right, very much. Brother Larry Graham, are you in possession of the cutting implement? Brother Master of Ceremonies, I am in possession of the cutting implement. We will commence the traditional cutting and service of the cake, wherein the oldest Marine present Corporal Jesse James, who served from 1960 to 1965, will serve the youngest Marine present, Lance Corporal Jessica Pena, who is currently serving in the Marine Corps. If you all would come up onto the stage with me. You may proceed. Don't hurt anybody.
take care of it. No. You may be seated. The purpose of tonight's gathering is to both celebrate the birth of the United States Marine Corps and raise funds to benefit both the brave men and women who are serving our country. At this time, we're going to make presentations, uh, first uh, of commendation and then of the funds themselves. Uh, we'll, um, Sonia Reed, Patrick Byrne, Wayne Schmidt, and Dominic Torres, a symbol at the foot of the stairs, please. Miss Sonia Reed, it's a great pleasure that I present to you this certificate of commendation for the Diamond Bar Women's Club for their efforts to support the Marine Corps and their efforts <laughs> from, from Kathleen Barger's office. Also from Kathleen Barger, in, in commend, a commendation for the San Dimas Masonic Lodge for F efforts to support the 29 Palms Marine Corps Base and uh, the food drive. Just hang up here. Come on over here, Dominic. Dominic's nope. next. You All right, I'm up there. Jump in line. Jump in line there. And this is from Kathleen Barger's office for the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support for their efforts in supporting the food drive and tonight's event. Okay, Sonia, now we need your whole committee up here. Everybody's got to come on up here. We need all of the, everybody from Diamond Bar Military Outreach Committee, please ascend the stairs with us. Okay, Miss Sonia Reed and the Diamond Bar Women's Club Military Outreach Program. It's with great pleasure that we present this check from the San Dimas Masonic Lodge and the San Dimas Rotary Foundation and the people here and assembled in the amount of $5,000 for making spirits bright. Have to hold this one. On behalf of the mission, the Making Spirits Bright Committee and the Diamond Bar Women's Club, I would like to thank the Rotary of San Dimas and the Masons of the Masonic Lodge sincerely for this wonderful, wonderful check so deeply needed for the support of our Marines at 29 Palms in the Camp Pendleton base. They will have a good Christmas this year. Thanks to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. In February 2022, the Rotary Club of San Dimas and the San Dimas Masonic Lodge, along with American Legion Star Post 309 and community groups as far away as Georgia, participated in a food drive for the Pelican Pantry located on the 29 Palms Marine Corps base. Over five tons of food and over $4,000 was delivered for our enlisted Navy and Marine Corps personnel and their families. However, the success highlighted the continuing problem of over 22,000 active duty families, 213,000 National Guard and Reservist families, and more than 1.2 million veterans who suffer from food insecurity. We wondered what happens in a few months when those supplies we delivered were exhausted. Who would the family, where would the families of those 10,000 Marines and 1,000 sailors at 29 Palms tune, turn to for support? As a solution, the Rotary Club of San Dimas decided to create a permanent supply line to aid the military families at 29 Palms. Rotary International developed concepts which provide a pathway for a solution. Rotary Clubs can sponsor satellite clubs. Members of satellite clubs are full Rotarians, but they benefit from the infrastructure of the sponsoring club. Rotary International now also recognizes single issue clubs. This allows for satellite clubs to focus on a single cause, such as the support for military families. In May of this year, Rotary did something it had never done in more than a century of its existence. It was founded in 1905. It created a Rotary Club that has no geographic determination. You're probably familiar with the Glendora Rotary Club or perhaps the West Covina Sunrise Club. 
but this Rotary Club is now called the Rotary Club of San Dimas, which founded the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support. In March next year, the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support will launch their first resupply drive for the Pelican Pantry. The pantry is operated by the Armed Services YMCA at 29 Palms, and their executive director, Patrick Byrne, works tireless, 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 he works a lot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> to provide aid and support, who wrote this? Provide aid and support to the military families at 29 Palms. I know, I, I said the word juxtaposition earlier too. Uh, to assist the, M service, uh, the Armed Services YMCA in their mission, it's with great pleasure that the San Dimas Rotary Foundation and the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support and the people herein assembled tonight present this check at an amount of $1,000 to the Armed Services YMCA 29 Palms. I would just like to say thank you to everybody here spending the evening and supporting us and supporting these great um, workers who do so much for our young military at 29 Palms. You know, when people come to us, everybody wants to do something, but not everybody is able to do something. Um, and people come with grand and great ideas and then you never hear from them again. I will tell you that Making Spirits Bright, the Diamond Bar Women's Club, I would say the San Dimas Rotary and the San Dimas Masons are three groups that actually deliver and deliver in a huge, huge way. I'm grateful to all of them. And I also want to mention Country Estates, uh, Diamond Bar Country Estates. They've been great friends and supporters to us even being here with us tonight. But those three organizations, um, Making Spirits Bright, the San Dimas Rotary and the San Dimas Masons, makes me almost want to become a Mason, I'll tell you at this point. <laughs> Uh, thank you. God bless you. Um, continue to keep the uh, the military, but in particular, in particular, the Marines, in your thoughts and your prayers. Have a good Christmas. Before we adjourn this event, let us again reverently unite with our chaplain as he delivers the benediction. Please rise and remain standing after the inter uh, benediction as the colors are retired, brother chaplain. Gracious creator of all things, we humbly thank you for your presence and all of the blessings you have provided. We reverently request that thou look upon this assembly with favor. May the friendship we share refresh our spirits and, re and resolve to follow your teachings. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Diamond Bar Women's Club, the Armed Services YMCA at 29 Palms, the Rotary Club of San Dimas, the San Dimas Masonic Lodge, the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support, and the veterans here in assembled, assembled. I humbly thank you for your support and generosity. I bid you a good night, God bless you, and God bless the United States Marine Corps. Thank you, the, uh, that's our ceremony. In about five minutes, the tour will take place. If you'd like pictures, now's the time to get up here and get pictures.